Coming up on today's podcast, a bit of this. I'm not sure I like judging newborn babies. They don't know enough to judge me. Indeed. (laughs) (laughs) And a bit of this. So when you say giant baby sculptures, you're not talking about sculptures by a giant baby. (laughs) (laughs) Hello and welcome to Modern Art is Rubbish, episode number 11. Are you alright, Tom? Not really, but... Oh no, but you're soldiering on. You're not feeling uh, great. Well, yeah, I just can't be... With all this, to be honest. Oh no! Now I've got a bleep. I've already got a bleep. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Are you alright, Sarah? Please yeah, I'm bleep. Good. I can't I'm do good. double bleep. So you're good, yeah? Yeah. I'm yeah. Good. Sorry. Oh, no. I'm gonna have to bleep. All right. That's double bleep already. Um, so uh, I had a friend who asked me. He said, "Who's Sarah?" So Sarah, who are you? Um, I'm Sarah. I'm a friend of Marcus's and Tom's, and um, a listener of Modern Art is Rubbish. Um, and I'm on the baby special. Oh yes, very good. Yeah, babies. So, um, so what is this baby special that everyone seems to be on today? Well, uh, I was actually talking to my mum a couple of weeks ago, and I I noticed because I'm very observant that babies seem really popular at the moment. And uh, my mum actually <laughs> told me that you no know, babies have always been around, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> she said, "What a strange thing to say." What so? What she was saying essentially is that they've always been popular. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I just saw a lot of uh, yeah. I just saw a lot of um, push chairs around. But also, I was thinking like, there's a lot of uh, man babies in powerful positions around the world mm. as well. So I thought this kind of got me thinking about babies and art. You know, and previously on the show we've uh, talked about the flower pots of Van Gedi's babies and the perfect little baby Vincent on the Van Gogh special. <laughs> oh, and he was a wicked little linguist, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Well, no, the baby wasn't. The baby wasn't. But Van Gogh was. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> the baby, I don't think, did much. So um, today we're going to be looking at a few things. I thought we'll look at why medieval babies look so ugly. We'll be talking about uh, some giant outsized babies, military art babies, <laughs> and latex baby suits, and the birth of Baby X. So the first one I want to talk about is uh, ugly babies in medieval in medieval paintings and I mean I was thinking if you look around I mean today I mean realistic baby depictions are just everywhere everywhere you go you always see realistic baby depictions or maybe it's is it just me that sees realistic (laughs) baby depictions everywhere but it was not always like this I mean there was a time when babies were painted as ugly baby men yeah, but babies have always been a bit ugly, haven't they? Surely. It's, the, it's all about the smell with babies, isn't it? Well, no, but not ugly baby men. <laughs> I, think, I think the issue with the ugly baby men is that they look pretty old. They don't look like fresh young babies. Fresh young babies? <laughs> it looks like you go to the shop and buy fresh young babies for dinner. Well, they look ser- like they have a sort of serious age thing going on. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, that baby looks old. Yeah. I mean, the, I've picked a couple. The first one I've picked is the the expulsion of the money changers, uh, which is uh, circa uh, 1480 to 1500 when they reckon it was painted. And it's attributed to, this is a great name, Master of the Cress Epiphany. And it's a Dutch <laughs> painter. Now, I'm looking at this picture... And it's supposed to be recreating the the, uh, biblical scene where Jesus goes into the temple and sees lots of traders and money changers and he gets very angry. Now, in this particular painting, Jesus has actually gone into the future and he's now gone into a a Gothic-style church, uh, which is about 1,200 years after his death. But So he's gone into the future and he's angry at all the commerce he's seeing around him. And the church is filled with concerned merchants, fearful of the whip that Jesus is brandishing in this picture. Um, And you can see here that Jesus as well, with his free hand, he's knocking over a table of money. 
So if you look, there's a little man baby. Yeah, there's and, two, isn't there? Yeah, there's a little crafty little blonde man baby and he's making a grab for some flying cash. <laughs> and you can see, I, I don't know, what I mean, what's he look like to you? The man baby. Um, probably like Tom York on an average morning. <laughs> it's like Tom York baby, Tom York he baby. He does look like Tom York. <laughs> yeah, so... He's he's seen he's seen the monetary opportunities that Jesus is presenting to him. Um, something that I think would be quite good for the uh, people to for you. Something would be quite good for you listening as well. Is they're actually in the picture as well. Is there is a sort of banking baby that's clearly angry at Jesus' attack on his trading floor, and he's waving his fist. He looks a bit like the love child of Chucky from Child's Play and Chucky from Rugrats. And he's, uh, <laughs> so I put a link up on the site and then if people want to have a look and see if they can find him. They're very small compared to everybody else. They look a bit like puppets, these yeah, babies. I, I f- That's the thing with babies though, they are smaller, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, would Jesus really get, get a whip out and start whipping a baby? Well, he's not whipping the baby, he's genuinely brandishing his whip but the baby's just seen a business opportunity and I quite <laughs> I quite respect a business baby business baby big, big business baby yeah so uh, I mean another one that I've selected for this sort of baby special is a painting which was by Paolo Veneziano which is uh, called Madonna of the Poppy and it's a uh, I've seen better looking Madonna Virgin Mary's than the one in this picture as well I have to say so it's not surprising that she might have a baby that looks like that. <laughs> this is the baby that looks old also looks like he's wearing quite a lot of makeup yeah so what it is is a baby sitting on the lap of the Virgin Mary and uh, he's reaching to a poppy that she's uh, that she's got yeah so I find it it's quite unusual to see someone from the 14th century wearing a poppy on remembrance I guess this must have been in November this painting it was done <laughs> <laughs> it's got probably got a time machine or something but again I've I'm not what do you think of the hair as well have you seen the hair it's like a, it's kind of like he's got a side perm Jesus has got a side perm which looks pretty good yeah there's a sort of hint of lizard about it <laughs> <laughs> and a bit Andrew Lloyd Webber it makes me think of Andrew Lloyd Webber I'm not sure oh, why oh no my god Andrew Lloyd Webber baby <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is with babies the thing is with babies the thing is <laughs> the thing is with medieval babies is that they were drawn in this specifically in this way they weren't drawn realistically because at the time uh, babies weren't actually considered uh, a thing in themselves. Uh, what, what, so they were intentionally made to look more adult? Because, yes, because at the time, medieval, at the medieval times, people believed that babies were just, tra- it was just a transitional period to becoming an adult, which you became an adult around about the age of seven. Yeah. So... But that's true, it is a transitional period. But it's not It's not a adult. thing in itself. In the same way, okay. if you look at 1950s when people became a teenager, yeah, uh, there was an actual, they used to just be considered young adults, but suddenly there was a period where they then became, became a, a teenager, teenager yeah. which is a separate thing. And it was similar with babies, and especially more so. So this is one of the reasons they were depicted as little men, because they right. were only seen as men, in, almost like men in waiting. Oh. And the other thing as well is in medieval times, a lot of churches uh, were, well, most churches were the main patrons of art. So to them, Jesus and a lot of the baby pictures were of Jesus. And to them, Jesus was born perfect. Oh. So he wasn't a child. He was born like the perfect little baby Jesus with all, the, all his Jesus stuff, whatever his Jesus stuff is all ready to go. <laughs> Yeah. So that is why when when they painted him, they painted him as a small adult, oh. not as a baby. I thought they did it because they didn't have baby models. Like, no, no, no. Then they just did little pe- little men. I just thought he was from a hairy race of people. <laughs> <laughs> he might have been a hairy Jesus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God, hairy <laughs> Jesus! I don't think of hairy Jesus. <laughs> so. 
So, so, so is there a baby pictures of a baby Jesus with beard? No, they, they haven't. <laughs> they, I don't think they go that far. But the it's actually called the homuncular Jesus, which is the idea of the man. It's it's kind oh. of like the idea of the man child. So the other thing to be pointed out was that. In medieval times, paintings were more expressionistic than realistic. So they were there to convey a message. Yeah. Not to depict reality, but to say this is what the perfect little Jesus, baby Jesus was about. Mm. And and gradually... Well, so they were more like concept albums, pictures in the olden days. I suppose they were more conceptual. Yeah. There was more... Uh, there was a lot more uh, sort of like beasties going on. I mean, even if we look at this picture here, you'll notice there's an upside down dragon, which has kind of appeared in the shot. Yeah, and some of the other faces look a bit animalistic. And also there's a, uh, a kind of like a, a smooth a smooth operator ram who's yeah, looking I out at the that. audience. He looks pretty happy with himself, that And he's ram. looking out at the audience saying, you know, here I am, come and get me. <laughs> so... That's the reason why there is uh, ugly babies. But what I'll do is for all you uh, listening at the moment, I'll put a uh, link on the website. And there is another account, a Tumblr account, which actually features regularly uh, ugly babies in Renaissance paintings. So I'll put a link to that as well. So it's a known thing, the ugly babies in Renaissance painting. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. seen some memes, I think, yeah. with ugly babies. But gradually over the time, again, uh, I, I think Renaissance babies became, they became more muscular. I think that yeah. was the thing. They got a few more, you know, because they were going about the super baby, super baby Jesus. I've just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> but Sounds they definitely though. did come become more muscular. And also, gradually, as children became more individual and they accepted that baby was a, was a thing in itself, and a childhood is a thing in itself throughout the renaissance period they they started to find that the beauty of the the jesus being a, a young child yeah it was a beautiful thing and it was a thing that they wanted to depict mm. well, the, well. the innocence yeah well i yeah. don't know if it was the innocence well yeah, or whatever. yeah not the innocence of the, this baby that's the money grabbing money grabbing tom york baby <laughs> not that's not innocent at all but yes yeah, so that's quite adult yeah. Right, so uh, the next topic uh, of, of babies f for discussion is the uh, giant, I found a few giant baby sculptures. So when you say giant baby sculptures, you're not talking about sculptures by a giant baby. Uh, <laughs> that would be so cool. Who is this giant baby, Marcus? Yeah. <laughs> I, He's really good. You should if I got like rich, it. I would. I would, f f what would you feed a baby to, steroids? Um, right. A giant baby would I'll, need big I, bowls of porridge. I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend feeding any baby steroids. It's it's illegal and immoral. Immoral. Yeah. Yeah, it is immoral, isn't it? Well, it depends if they're competing in the Olympics because <laughs> people take steroids for health conditions, don't they? That's so, true. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, baby Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've watched the crawl at hundred meters. <laughs> no, not the crawl. I said it like it was like nasty. I didn't mean crawl. I mean crawl, as in like crawling. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's fun in the Olympics when someone's had a lot of steroids and they're really good. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't want babies on steroids. I don't want babies on porridge. Yeah, but if we're going to have a baby's Olympics, I think steroids should be allowed. Yeah, but they were creepy, <laughs> wouldn't they? Because babies, were, babies, steroids is like sugar, isn't it? Right. Yeah. It's like like jelly, sugar. jelly, <laughs> jelly. Yeah, they'd have to test them for jelly, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> jelly test they just wobble them wouldn't they <laughs> and if they wobble too much then they wouldn't be allowed to race <laughs> <laughs> too, too high levels of black current in their urine <laughs> <laughs> that's the chair creaking not my backside um, <laughs> so the first sculptor I've picked is a British contemporary artist uh, who works normally in installation and painting and it's Mark Quinn and Mark Quinn's work uh, usually explores what it is to be human in the world today and he's famous for 
doing a a cast of his own head in blood which we'll probably talk about at another podcast but the one i'm talking about today is a giant hovering baby what it is is a giant it's a giant white bronze sculpture of his son as a sleeping baby and it looks like he's hovering above the ground yeah it's just like like it's balanced just on his one hand Well, what I like about it is the fact that it's, it looks like it's got no weight, but yet it clearly is. Yeah. His baby, his, his son's really heavy. It looks very big because it's, it's um, the image I'm looking at is in the city. Yeah. And it's like, it seems like it's bigger than some of the tower blocks. It's, is that just the trajectory I of think the it's, picture? No, I think it's a house sized. Yeah, I, I mean, think it's, it's a really, big, really, baby. really, really big. It's big a, yeah. big big massive sculpture i forgot to get the dimensions but i will put the dimensions on the website so people can get the uh, awesomeness of the awesomeness of the baby well it's quite an achievement for the mother without doubt yeah i imagine that what well, do you reckon it's like a big sculpture bronze that gives birth to the <laughs> well there's an, well, an artist gave birth to this one so yeah. i guess he's the mother isn't he oh yeah well he's the yeah he's the, like the the perfect I don't know what (laughs) he's the sculptor (laughs) he's the sculptor he's the man he's the man and it caused a bit of a what was that it caused a bit of a a commotion when it ended up near a skip for repairs people thought it was like a giant marshmallow man (laughs) in an industrial estate but now it's in um, Singapore so how? So the people saw it in. A I think it was being transported, and it was left somewhere in like an industrial what, estate. So what do they call the Ghostbusters or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I found um, some stuff that doesn't. Well, this Jonathan Jones is an art critic. Where was it? In, was it quoted? What was that in? Jonathan Jones writing for the Guardian. Um, he's an art critic, and he does not like this. Why? He says some things, including it's reductive and attention-seeking. Um, that it art that flaunts its content in an immediately readable way risks vacuity and that what? it's a bland cocktail of awe and empathy hey, so it's a giant floating baby yeah but I love it yeah I think what he's saying I think what Jonathan Jones is saying is that it's so big and it's so easily understandable I think that it's you don't even need to see it necessarily. And he's saying, he talks about how you can drive past it and understand it. And he thinks that's a flaw in art. But I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, but there's a lot of art pieces you can see in books. Yeah, but there's, come on, there's nothing. Who wouldn't like a big floating baby? (laughs) (laughs) Things he's saying, it makes it not very good. So I think about, when I see it, I, I do, it makes you think about can babies float and are they that big I love it I think it's yeah I think that there's some art that can be made just for the just for the pleasure of making a giant baby that's yeah. uh, and so people can see a giant baby I mean I haven't seen this have you seen it in, you haven't seen any of his in the flesh any of I'm his just wondering words? what the pleasure of making a giant baby and how do you know it was going to be a giant baby in the first place yeah and how can you measure the pleasure <laughs> <laughs> Well, there'd be a lot of pleasure in seeing a giant floating baby. That's all I can say. Yeah, I mean, I get what he's saying a bit. Like he, uh, Mark Quinn, also did the fourth plinth. Um, he was the first artist commissioned for the fourth plinth in Trafalgar Square. Do you remember he did a model of Anis, um, the artist Alison Lapper? Oh pregnant. yes, yes, yeah, yeah, Alison Lapper, and he did it originally. Um, I think normal size, like um, realistic size, and yeah. then he scaled it up for that Trafalgar. Um, square plinth and in the scaling up I think it lost a lot of its detail and its charm so I haven't actually seen this big baby but I wonder if there's I don't know do you know what I mean like you lose a lot of detail and some of the sort of nicer aspects of oh, I don't know I don't know if I like to see a mini floating baby no <laughs> yeah you might accidentally tread on it might you <laughs> yeah no I don't like that Having spoken about a giant unchallenging babies, according to that critic, here's another one, <laughs> which is um, by Ron Muick. Now he was originally he's an he's an Australian. 
he originally worked as a model maker and he worked with Jim Henson. He's made this incredible, huge, huge, hyperreal baby and it's like a newborn baby well it is a newborn baby but it's huge i mean I, I'm, I'm looking at it i'm imagining it's about what 10 foot yeah i think it is over no, yeah. i think over 16 <clears throat> foot over 16 foot so it's like a bfb big friendly baby oh yeah <laughs> although it does look a bit grumpy well dale's big friend i don't know he looks like an he does look like an old man baby yeah it, 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 it does like evil it, baby <laughs> it does look like a realistically newborn baby yeah. doesn't it yeah kind of all creased up it's very, um, it's very sort of uh, judgmental. I believe this newborn baby. Do you think? Yeah, I'm not sure. I like judging newborn babies. They don't know enough to judge me. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and another work by Ron Muick. He's uh, two big surprise babies. These are two babies, and they're on their sort of hands and knees. I would say they're about. Uh, it has got the measurements. I no, I'm, saying, I'm trying to guess their age. I'm guessing oh. <laughs> they're about one or two. Yeah. One, one and a bit. Yeah, 18 months. Yeah. yeah, so well, they're like brothers. They've got different colour hair. I don't know if they are brothers. They're a bit more cartoony faced. Yeah. Whereas the newborn, a yeah. girl, that one's called they the could, big They've newborn. got a slight monkey element to them, haven't they? Or chi- yeah. a chimpanzee, look a bit chimpanzee. Oh, those as, cheeky as we babies. Are, we are a bit chim- chimpanzee related, aren't we? Yeah. So. Oh, chimp babies. Why do you chimp do chimp babies? Ba- I would have rather seen chimp babies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, chimp babies. Best, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> if that's what they're called. Yeah. I mean, has there been the same kind of debate about this one as well I mean, is this, not that is this... one but uh, Jonathan Jones again didn't like um, so the giant newborn baby is called a oh, girl is he, he a didn't baby like that. hater well he says similar things about um, this one that he does about the Mark Quinn um, I think his his main problem is it's he doesn't think it's a very um, deep idea he thinks that it's too immediate huh. um yeah, he says it's vaguely pathetic, tedious tradition, and um, a critic called David Sylvester has dubbed it kitchen sink art. So, so this writer, did, did he was he like a, a rejected artist? I don't know. I think that I think it's tricky. Like critics have to see a lot of art, yeah. and I think that they get snobbish. They get like they want to be challenged, and if art comes too immediately to them, and they think that they've understood it completely, then they. I'm I'm not sure I completely disagree with him about the Mark Quinn, but about the Ron Muick, a girl sculpture. I think that I think he's wrong. I think he misses quite a big point of it. He did a sculpture as well of his dad, didn't he? Called Dead Dad. Oh uh, yes. Yeah, which is like a corpse of well, his dad dead lying on the floor naked. But I think that birth and death is something that's quite hidden in society that we don't actually share it. It's quite private. Yeah. Um, and to make sort of sculptures hyper real sculptures that allow sort of everybody to have a a look and be reminded of sort of those are the biggest things they're the two most inevitable things the yeah, two yeah. inevitable things that happen to us and probably the biggest things either giving birth being born and dying and I think that making hyper real sculptures of them allows people to experience that yeah no that's good no yeah. I think that's true yeah, yeah definitely a yeah, useful reminder yeah yeah Floaty lights. So, from giant babies to military art babies. Right, so there's a ceramicist called Johnson Tsang, and he was born in Hong Kong in 1960. He used to serve in the police force, and he saw a lot of... uh, unpleasantness shall we say he was in the tactical unit the emergency unit he'd been a special duty squad vice squad so he'd seen a lot of like quite intense stuff so there's quite influences his work but also he said that you know he started to teach kids in 2005 and he was quite interested in the fact of you know seeing things through a child's eyes and everything and this is kind of like his work expresses his inner child but what he does is he creates these uh, what they look like is they look like small Chinese children and in this picture I'm looking at 
and it's called uh, the Security Summit. And it's several babies all dressed in military gear and they've got like rocket launchers and they've got rifles and guns and they've surrounded a very, very worried looking cherub. And the next uh, piece is the same soldier babies all sitting around, but they're all pointing at each other and they're all crying and they're all accusing each other. And in the middle of them now lies a dead cherub baby. Oh. And it's called, and the piece is called Who Did It? Yeah. Quite a sort of, it's quite easy to get. In yeah, terms of it's accessible, at, yeah. but it's, it's interesting and quite powerful. I it's think. very accessible. I mean, his work is really interesting. It's very surreal, I think. It's, it's, I think quite, it's, it's quite Lord of the Flies. Yeah, yeah, it's quite surrealist. I mean, there's another. There is a very sort of like a again. There's one here where there's a, he's got a lot of upset cherubs. There's an upset cherub in a cage, and in, there's another uh, uh, another baby in the cage with the upset cherub, and yeah. he's just looking onto him. What um, what are cherubs? What do they symbolise? Cherubs are like fish fingers. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, on that sort of attendants or something. <laughs> oh yeah, they're uh, oh yeah, attendants, baby, baby, little baby god servants. Oh yeah, well, that, yeah. that's good, god servants. Okay, so they might, they represent innocence and purity, I guess. Then because yeah. they're babies, so they're not like grown up god servants. No, no, they're like. I can hear a, I can hear a little baby cherub. No, it's a dog. <laughs> it's Toby. Toby, what, what breed is Toby? Is Toby Cherub your dog? Uh, yeah, he's half Cherub, half Fish Finger. <laughs> <laughs> so, Johnson to Sang, I really like his work. I'm going to put a link on the site for you listening. artist he's an artist that me and Sarah had a look at and she's French and she's called Sidonie Burgo and uh, she's also a theatre actress so I, I thought her work was quite interesting yeah she does like she makes latex sort of skins that then can be worn so there's one that is called observatory or observatoire um, and that is like it's like a pregnant woman's torso so it's got, um, yeah, it's made out of latex and it ties up at the back and it's like a a porthole into a pregnant lady's stomach. I mean, it's quite, it's quite a party outfit, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and it's called observatory or observatoire in French and it's the idea that we can look in but also that that little baby can look out. Oh, I like baby portals. I like that idea. Yeah. I like the look of it. Yeah, I think it's interesting. And that she's got another one as well in a similar vein called Femoral Mother Effect. I'm not sure what that is in French. Um, and that is, um, it's a bra with a built-in baby. So it's a breastfeeding bra with a built-in baby made out of latex, um, which I also quite liked. And then the third one that you like, oh. yeah, Punch Ball. Yeah, I like that because that's got a... It's a baby on top of a boxing punch ball and the uh, punch ball is like the earth and the baby's on top. And I just quite like the violence of it and this sort of a well, baby that's going to come and sort it, it out. It does make me think, bad baby, bad, bad baby, baby, bad baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I love the fact that the rescuing baby, I think it's a really visual. Yeah, it's a very I think it visual is, yeah. Piece. It's a media and it's accessible, definitely. But to me, I looked at it and I saw a baby, I saw a punch bag and I saw the world and I just thought that's three elements I like. And yeah. And that's immediately why I liked it. I got a bit more from the other two yeah, pieces. I, yeah. Um, I think there's something quite uncomfortable in the idea of putting on somebody's skin or being able to put on somebody's skin or be able to take your own skin off. Yeah. Um, and the one that's called ephemeral mother effect I thought that was quite interesting so it's a bra with a baby attached um, and it's it's kind of suggesting that the bra is the thing you're purchasing or acquiring yeah. and then the baby is just an add-on um, which is interesting because normally the baby is the main star oh yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, that's <laughs> true, isn't it? It's like the baby's yeah. Yeah, I thought it was like if you bought a Ribena and yeah. the baby's the straw that comes with it. So Yeah, I like that because our mobile phone contract and the baby's five hundred messages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now on 
to the, the final one, which is quite an interesting uh, artist, called Mar- Marnie Kotak. Now, for those of you that have listened to our earlier pods, uh, she was influenced, uh, she's influenced by Chris Burden and Marina Abramovich, as two of the artists that she mentions. And what she does is she's, she's decided to make her life her art. So the actual events in her life become her art. And uh, so what she did was in uh, 2011, she decided to uh, give birth as performance art. Whoa. And it was called The Birth of Baby X. So what they did was they converted the studio into the, the sorry, the gallery space into a birthing birthing room complete with birthing pool and they even uh, they've got like a shower there and everything that she would need for to have a baby well did she actually have a baby in there then yeah yeah with an audience baby. yeah with an audience her and actual also, own baby yes <gasps> she, so she gave birth in the gallery and also she's even got trophies one for her and one for her new baby because I would like, if I was giving birth, I think you should get a trophy. Yeah, totally. I've, I've heard it's quite, it's quite hard work. So if you got a trophy, maybe that would somehow, you get a baby. Is that like a moving crying trophy? Wow. It, yeah, but I mean, if you did that for your university degree, you'd expect a first, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so what happened was that, the, you know, on the day, the gallery actually had a... Uh, had a list of people that could be invited and they had so they notified them as soon as the birth was happening as soon as she went into labour they were yeah. like come on down yeah and there's bouncers they had two they had two bouncers on the door to stop sort of the press and just people just wandering in off the street because obviously I assume that there's uh, difficulty in having a baby if just everyone just turns up yeah. just for the party yeah the public weren't able to oh, go no, in and the, see it the public were able to go in but you got you know for the actual birth you you would have needed to have been on a on a list. Yeah, so I think it, that's for safety reasons. Yeah, right. So they could see it before it happened and after it happened. Yeah, yeah. Not they, the actual like event. No, they yeah. saw the actual event, but the people. So it would have been that list of people that were yeah, invited yeah, to the birth would yeah. have been what gallery members or people. Well, that I think it could have it. been people who signed up for yeah. it. People have been invited. At least one midwife, you'd hope. Yeah, yeah. There was. <laughs> I think there was someone to help. Because it's also interesting, you did talk about the fact that there's quite a large percentage of in America of births that are actually by cesarean. Yeah, so this I option is, is quite too. is quite rare to actually have a natural a natural birth and get a trophy at the end of it as well. I think that's yeah. that's unusual. What's really interesting is she's continued her life with with her baby. The baby's actually called Ajax, and it's a boy. Um, she's continued to document her life. And events from her life have now yeah. also become performances. So in 2012, after the birth uh, in 2011, she recreated another piece, which was called Postpartum Depression. And what she did was she actually uh, recreated her experience with being depressed after the birth. Uh, so she went into a gallery and she recreated her bed that she stayed in and she's got a lot of medical imagery as you can see on the walls and she also had breast pumps which she pumped milk which is quite necessary to do if I assume she was over producing milk Um, and of course she's sitting there for six hours and deep down she wants to just be with her baby so people could see this real sense of separation Mm. going on Um, and so Again, she still to this day is creating work and this is quite a good one. And this is called Singing Rain, which is Ajax's, Ajax, her son's second birthday party. So what happened was the the, the piece in 2013, uh, the public were invited to attend his second birthday party and they had a live jazz band and they had a rain machine and also they had uh, so they gave everyone uh, umbrellas and they had a ball pit for toddlers as well oh, well the ball pit sounds on brand but I didn't know toddlers like jazz 
and rain well, so much. I, I, I do, but I, I do think that. But if you can see here, you, yeah. And but when you get parents that call their children Ajax, you know they're going to like jazz. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, is it Ajax or Ajax? <laughs> Ajax, I'm oh, sorry. Ajax. Ajax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> might be, it might be. It's spelled Ajax. It's spelled the same though, isn't it? So yeah. Is it? So it could be after the. Uh, but look, there's there's a little picture, and I will put links to the uh, pages on there. And he's very happy here with his umbrella. Oh. So, I mean. I like it. I yeah. think it is art. I think it is interesting art. And mate, that everything she does is real. Yeah. It's, but he now is a collaborative artist. Yeah. She considers him uh, a collaborator yeah. in, in the artwork. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I like it as well. The giving birth, that goes back to the idea of, of making birth, which has become so private, public. But I think the second one is quite extreme to be to put yourself through, to relive depression and separation from your child. Yeah. That's quite a big... She also did a recreation of her grandfather's funeral. Whoa. But that was more of a recreation, whereas this is a real a yeah. real sense of separation. So you are seeing literally someone who's separated. Yeah. But she's, she's, she originally started off uh, doing recreations of events from her life, and then she went mm. to thought, well, I might as well do a real one. I wonder how you'd feel as a, as a visitor to that exhibition. To what? see a sad woman in bed missing her child. I don't know, would you feel a bit guilty? Yeah, but you might get tickets to the uh, Singing Rain party <laughs> a few years You might later. get an invite, yeah. Yeah, and I, yeah I'd, I'd go for the invite. I'd be in the ball pit. I'd just kick all the, uh, the toddlers out and just have the ball pit to myself. Right, um, I think that wraps it up for our babies Woo. special. Has anyone else got anything to add? Any baby kind of uh, vibes? I think I'm babied out. Are oh, you babied out? Yeah. Oh, I never babied out. So, uh, I'd just like to say uh, thanks for listening to everyone and please uh, remember to check out modernartisrubbish.com uh, and uh, I'll put up all the links to all the artworks that we've discussed. And a lot of people subscribe to us via iTunes, so if you want to do that, if you could leave a review, that would be fantastic. And you can join the conversation with us on Facebook. And if you have any questions or suggestions for the show, our email is info at modernartisrubbish.com. And uh, thanks so much for listening. I Thank think, you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. And uh, just a reminder to everyone, if you see babies out and about, they're not necessarily works of art. Though they could be, so send them in to us. Yeah. <laughs> Don't send babies in the post. That's not good. No, you can't do that. <laughs> babies in the post. We could do a feature called Babies in the Post. Oh, yeah. Babies in the Post. Babies in the Post. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I ordered my baby three days ago. Is it all right? Is it coming? It must have been sent second class. <laughs> Bye.